From BLC Studios in Mankato, Minnesota, this is the Maverick Hockey Live Podcast, presented by Duncan, with your host, Shane Frederick. This is the Maverick Hockey Live Podcast, presented by Duncan. This is a special broadcast in the off-season. I'm Shane Frederick, the host, and joining me today, uh, it's my pleasure to have on the new coach of the Minnesota State men's hockey team, Mr. Luke Strand. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm well. Thanks for having me. It's uh, <laughs> it's good, though. I, I, I'm so excited about the opportunity, but um, man, I don't know where the days and the times are going right now. <laughs> I mean, we are recording this at uh, a little before five o'clock on Tuesday, April 11th. So about uh, 25 hours, I think, after you were formally introduced. Uh, I know the announcement uh, came out yesterday morning early, but uh, your your formal introduction and press conference was uh, yesterday around this time. So a little bit of a whirlwind few days for you. How are you feeling? It, it's good. I think um, I got all six hours of sleep that I needed. And <laughs> But I'll tell you, I, it, it's, it's totally worth it. Um, I think this was part of the the plan, and now it's time to make sure we're on the same page and, and moving forward. So, what what's what, what have you been doing the last couple of days, other than the, some of the pomp and circumstance? I know there was the press conference and and that, and then there was a, a little event with uh, some of the friends of Maverick Hockey last night. Um, but um, you, you went probably right to work. I'm assuming as soon as you signed your contract. Yeah, I mean, there's some you got to cross some T's and dot some I's as far as HR and some things of that nature, but. After that, it's been digging into the players, the players that are here, um, individual meetings, uh, group setting with a group meeting. And then this morning started out early with the full staff, just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page, the direction, the vision, um, and really hear hear their side of everything too. And, and really, uh, it's, it's hard to say like, you know, what you like, what you love, what you want type thing. But it, it really is a little bit of that. Like if there's a time that we could take a paintbrush out and, and put some things on that we want to do. Uh, I'm really interested in what they feel has been really successful. Maybe some things they'd tweak or change and vice versa, like share some of my thoughts. And, and that, that part has been pretty powerful just to sit down with, with the entire staff. This, um, you know, for you, you know, you come into a situation where the programs had a lot of success um, and the coach has moved on where uh, other situations, uh, there are situations where a team has not been successful and a, a coach uh, gets let go. Um, and then someone's asked to come in and, and rebuild. Uh, you mentioned this a little bit in your, in your remarks yesterday about, you know, the, the, the scope, the national scope that this program is on uh, to come in here with things, you know, in good, in a good place, but also to put your stamp on it right away. What, what is that like for you? You know, I mean, not that you can compare it to the other side of it, but you, you are coming into a different situation than, than other coaches might be going into a, a program where there's a coaching change. Yeah. I think the coaching change is one part. Um, the opportunity now in today's world with the portal, um, mm-hmm. guys signing early, you know, it, two weeks ago, you could have taken this job with a completely looking different <laughs> roster. Um, <laughs> right. But, but that's okay. That's, that's part of the drill It's part of the, the experience about what it means. And, and that's not going away and it's definitely not going to get any easier on that side. But, um, I think, you know, number one is our guys just talking culture, talk, talking exactly what we want to uh, expect from one another. I think that's a piece of it. Um, and the actual f- like boots on the ground, let's get to work. Hockey's a long ways away. So right. That's the weird part about taking a job in this scenario. We're not talking about hockey yet. That, that, that part hasn't even come. We're into people, and, and we're into what holes in the roster can we fill in internally as a staff, uh, what the expectation is for the guys that are returning, because there's a lot of guys that maybe didn't get opportunities to play in those roles that, that are available right now. And I, I to sit down with them one-on-one was, was nice because it was good to get where they felt, what they've been doing, and how they really, really feel they can get there. And you've had, uh, we can get into the, 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 the player aspect uh, right now. I mean, you have some familiarity with, with a couple of players who, who you coached at, at Sioux City a, a few years ago, and um, uh, Alex Tracy and Brendan Olson. Uh, and I'm sure just being, uh, in general, very familiar with uh, what Minnesota State was doing at that time, as, as uh, I'm sure other players were either being recruited or, or considered. Um, 
you know, what, what, what do you kind of, does that help with that little bit of familiarity or are you just kind of trying to keep everything a, a clean slate? Uh, no, it does. I mean, there's um, a lot of the guys you've either, listen, NCAA tournament, I, I watched them play St. Cloud. I, I watched the game. Um, we played the next day, so I had the day before to, to right. bear into that. Um, I, I think the formula, you start to really do a deeper dive once you're here to see, okay, this has kind of been a formula that they've had, a little bit older, a little bit bigger, a lot of experience, tried to really be junior, senior heavy in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of kids that turn into juniors and seniors. They were going to be counted on, and and this is really their time to step up, which is exciting in in their eyes. And and as a coach, you want to make sure that, that I can provide them as much clarity about what's going to happen next. And, and you know, you had, uh, I think, 10 players at the, the press conference yesterday, and I think people were um, pleased to see them, pleased to see Sam Morton as one of them, um, especially at such a good start to the season last year before uh, getting injured. Um, I know you mentioned there were a few other players who weren't able to be there for, for various reasons. Um, and then, you know, obviously between um, some pretty good seniors who graduated, um, some some players who signed early, some, you know, an All-American de defenseman in, in Jake Livingston, and, um, you know, and he and Akito Hiroshi both, you know, getting NHL experience already. And then a, a few key guys that I'm sure a lot of MSU fans and probably a, a new MSU coach were a little disappointed or entered the, the, the transfer portal, which you mentioned kind of the realities of the situation. Um, but, you know, given that, what, what do you, given all that, what I've mentioned, what else have you, do you see out of this, uh, you know, particular, you know, group that that's here right now? I think the group that's here right now has learned a lot from the experiences. They, they've been put in situations that are that are winning, that are exciting about those moments. Um, you start to lose the Rosies in the living strong. You, you start to lose good players. You also got to see what made them good. I really have a strong feeling for, for the guys that are here. Like, how was Pavel so good? Like, what, what turned the corner for him as a player? These guys got to be next to these guys day to day. I want those experiences to show up for the next group of players and the next group of players. But they've got to be able to take advantage of what's in front of them. You know, um, we're not going to wait and see who else, you know, comes about. It's, it's about digging in. And uh, Tommy in the gym, they've done a good job. They're back uh, back on track with that part. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a foot race to the end of the school year for the calendar on that side. And then guys will get a break, and, and then we'll come back. And, and you know, they'll, they're going to come back. A lot of them want to come back in June and July and, and really get after it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's um, and that feels like a, a, a real cultural thing about this program that's been put in place. And I, I you know, regardless of what the roster looks like, there are a, lo a lot of things. Whether it's a facility, whether it's the support, which you talked a lot about yesterday, um, both just in, in general fan support, and, and but also some pretty good booster support, and 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 then just the, the, the just the general you know success over the you know last decade plus. Um, it, it it feels like. Um, you got to be pretty comfortable with, with some of those pieces um, as you, as you do the other things to build up yeah, your first I'll, team. I'll, I'll tell you, like the guys are excited to come back in the summer because of the community. Yeah. I mean, there's opportunity to train and take class and do things that, that are advancing them as, as players and, and as people in the academic side, but they're excited to be around the community, which that, that just speaks volume for what's here. And I think, um, their vision for what they see themselves as and the success that they've tasted, they want to be the next ones leading that. And, and that's, that's exciting for a coach to walk into to see some determined young guys that are, like I said yesterday, they, they're committed. They, they didn't leave. They are fulfilling. They want to be a family. I thought Mort's hit it on the head when so this is our family, this right here, these, the one that stayed here, we're together. Yeah. As a coach to walk in and hear that, that's impressive. So one of the things you mentioned yesterday um, in in your press conference was kind of everything that you've been doing has kind of led up to this point or to be a head coach. And, and you had been um, a head coach in, in college before. You've, you've your, your resume is is uh, pretty varied. You, you know, head coach and um, director of hockey for a, a successful junior team in, in, in uh, Sioux City for for five years, um, a year at Wisconsin on the staff there, and then you. Um, uh, but you know, after your Sioux city stint, you go to Ohio state for a year as an assistant coach. Um, in, did you think 
you'd, you'd land a head coaching job uh, in college this quickly or what was kind of your, your plan going in, especially, you know, maybe just more recent history going from um, the USHL to Ohio state. Yeah. I'll tell you to, uh, I'll give Kevin a ton of credit here. And, and luckily for Hasey had a lot of the, maybe the same path along the way um, in, in some regard as my, my resume as well. But mm-hmm. a lot of schools out there personally are looking internally to hire another college coach, basically. They, they, they find that to be whatever. I, the hats that you wear in the USHL are immense. Like, I mean, you're talking selling, you're talking <laughs> following through, you're, you're talking coaching, mentoring, billets. You're, you're ta- every piece of the puzzle goes through your hands. It also prepares you to do that at anything. You know, you could go run a business doing the same thing. Sure. But uh, more importantly, I, I think the stop at Ohio State, the promise was made like they would do anything to help me. Um, they knew I wanted to be a head coach. Um, I'll give Steve Rollick, a Minnesota guy, a ton of credit. He allowed me to to coach. Um, he let me run the penalty kill and stayed out of the area. Um, I think it worked. We were yeah, number, very one, good. number one in the nation and, <laughs> and led the nation in shorthanded goals. And um, he let me run the D, and pretty soon you got two NHL signing D, and there was just a lot of good, and I'm very grateful for Steve. Jamie Bittner was a great friend of mine, is a great friend of mine. Well, maybe not after this move, but he's. <laughs> we're very tight, and, and um, we worked really well together as assistants there. And, uh, and that was a big draw for me to go somewhere we're comfortable. Um, but also, they they had done some winning things there that were very attractive for me to to want to go a little bit under the hood about what that meant. Uh, I thought, what a better opportunity and. I think to win a championship in the USHL is one thing, um, but mainly when you win, it, it's a residual. Like yesterday, my owner's there from Sioux City. Our CEO is there from Sioux City. They, I've been a year removed, right. and there they show up. The, those are the things I think you get out of those experiences, and pretty soon you're behind the you know, bench for 600-plus games as a head coach, <laughs> and you're like, I've done a lot of things on that side, but the college game is very – intriguing I, I think the opportunity to shape these guys lives um you know a couple guys today talking about girlfriends and like being in you know they want to get engaged and what they've got some forecast besides hockey and those are important things to hear and feel because uh the game is one thing uh, i think the game of life is probably a, a bigger a bigger piece of it yeah and you're, you're talking about uh, a big difference in age of guys too when you're w- working with those yep uh junior level players and and uh so much transformation takes place at those ages compared to you know if you're talking about some some older players on on this year's team yeah it's <laughs> it's it's neat and i you know i think at the college level uh when you're in junior hockey i think there's a little bit of like hey by the way the the, the stove's red that means don't touch it and they're they're still for sure going to touch it because they're that age and then right. now you're you're at this college of them and you still find the stove is red and a couple guys still want to touch it that's that's fine but a lot of the guys find i think value in the inexperience of experience of someone else has already maybe done something or failed forward and they've learned from each other and that that's in the maturity of our group right here they've learned a lot from the guys that came before them and uh we're gonna we're gonna honor that but we're gonna write our own story so you've also, um, you know, we mentioned, uh, you know, th- those two experiences. Um, one year at Wisconsin under Mike Eves. Did you play for Mike uh, at, at Eau Claire no, when you were at UW-Eau Claire? I, I, I didn't. I've just okay. known Ever for a long time. He sent me a very sweet text today, and I appreciate that, Coach, a ton. Um, uh, my time with Eber was excellent. It was unfortunate that, that it was at the time, you know, it was kind of a let's try to save the job type thing. I'm just a fan. I'm a, yeah. When I was a fan of that opportunity, too, I'm a fan of Mike. Um, and then, you know, pretty soon the, the new regime comes in and you watch guys that leave school that are Hobie Baker finalists and doing things at different schools, but they didn't stay there. So I got to learn from that because sure. pretty soon you get to a spot like this and you think you want to bring in all your own guys, but you're like, Ooh, these guys are here for a reason. So mm-hmm. let's just be patient about what, what this group can do. You know, when you were – let me – let I maybe try to rephrase a, a question from before, but I, you know, kind of going into the the impression of Minnesota state from an outsider, um, even at a time when you weren't necessarily um, expecting that maybe this job would be open and that you'd be the future Mavericks head coach. But as a, um, 
you know, as a coach in, in junior hockey and prior to that, um, being at, uh, uh, Wisconsin or, or even last year at Ohio state, what was your impression overall of what was happening in Mankato? Um, and, and you could probably even take that back to, um, you know, several years prior, um, as the, the program kind of slowly evolved in the division one era, yep. you know, up until this point. I, you know, I think when you're in junior hockey, you're watching kids that are being recruited by Minnesota state. You had a pretty good picture of like what person, what type of player, when they were arriving, you could almost go to a game and go like, he's going to Minnesota state. He's going to Minnesota because of the, they almost had a mold okay. in a lot of ways. Um, in, in a good way, like the, that gave them identity for what they wanted and how they they were doing things. I think you could see that from afar. You, you also followed the success that followed that, maybe that map that they had going. Um, on the other side, when I worked for the Flames as a NHL scout, I did a lot of college things and like Mackie was here. So mm -hmm. I'm out of Calgary, but a year later, Mac is signing with Calgary. It, it, there was just a lot of time spent watching that all pro that whole process show up. So I think the league, the CCHA personally has gotten a lot better. I think, um, I, I don't think it's a, a one way. I got a fun text from one of the coaches. They're like, the reason Hasty left is there's a three year ban of Minnesota state winning the league. That's why he decided <laughs> to get different because that's how they feel. And you know sure. what? I, I think one, they, we've set the bar, um, two, the standard has risen internally inside the university, but what they want to be and, and show, but the league is really working hard at, at, at keeping up with the Joneses per se. And uh, the league is good. It's deep and it's very competitive. <laughs> and uh, despite uh, uh, some roster turnover and uh, a, a new head coach, uh, you're, you're still going to have a pretty big target on your back as a, yep. as a six time uh, McNaughton. Yeah, uh, I think, and, the, and I think that's great. And I think our guys know that that, that are returning. And I think that lesson that they get to share with the new guys will be invaluable uh, on their experiences. You have a pretty good, uh, uh, rapport and uh, know the other coaches in the league pretty well? I do because over time, I think you, you get, especially the junior circle, you get in the idea of uh, they're constantly asking you about players or um, they're at your camps or they're following up with guys that you had before. Maybe now they're in the portal or whatever it may be. So yeah, we've known each other for a time and there's going to be some adjusting. Like you, you get to, you go through a big 10 schedule. That's one thing you you know, you go through a little bit of a murderer's row when you start to play three to three series in a row that are all the CCHA presents the same thing. You start mm -hmm. to go on the road and you got a hot goalie in tech. And then the next weekend you got a, a better team playing in, in Northern. And then pretty, it's like, whoa, you're back and forth. And I think the, the whole college scene um, for me, I think the parody has just made everybody better for it. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I know there were there was a lot of talk this year, and, and you were you were part of it with Ohio State with the, some of those first round lopsided scores in the NCAA tournament. But I, I felt like that was an outlier. If you start, I actually went back and I was gonna <laughs> just uh, put some social media out there, and I I didn't. But um, so many of the games last year in the first round went to overtime or were one goal games, and um, and, and I think the same the previous couple of years. So. Um, I thought that was a little bit of an outlier and, and I'm sure the, the big 10 was loving it. Um, until, you know, they had, a, any of them had to face <laughs> Quinnipiac apparently three including your squad. Yeah. Three <laughs> of us in a row. I mean, good for Quinnipiac that they, they went through that, but I, I do feel like, um, you know, the, the East, the, the East got some, a lot of respect for a long time because of maybe the repetitiveness of some schools showing up all the time. And now, then the West kind of goes through it, but then pretty soon you find some teams that are, you know, the, the one-offs are becoming more often by a lot of teams, not just, you know, one group of teams winning all the time. It, it's, it's really good for the game though. Do you take a lot of, uh, uh, you know, do you, do you give yourself a lot of uh, input looking at how those teams have had success and try to shape the way you want to build your, your team here, or do you kind of use your own philosophy or is it a little bit of everything, or is it still kind of uh, a work in progress? No, I, I'm definitely not afraid to look to see who's had success and why, you know, Quinnipiac is, is it, they, they're share portal kids and yep. they have a, they're not all NHL based team. They're a little bit older. They're a little bit wiser. Now are they maybe, made for a one class and one time to be very strong and then a dip possibly um i think if you get too old you you if you don't spread that out um 
and then you know nowadays the, the NHL is signing players earlier and earlier. It's everything's being forced by the top, and so the second that uh, a junior signing is as a free agent is very common, you know. But now the sophomores are signing as free agents too, yeah. and so I, I think that cycle ends up happening. And but you start to see the roster construction of of teams and and who's having success, and sometimes it's timing. Maybe the other part of the league is down and. Your biggest foe is on the way down, and you're on your way up. You uh, um, grew up in uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, just down the road from me in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. <laughs> so we got that in common, besides our haircuts. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, and then you you played at uh, UW Eau Claire, and you you, you later coached there. Um, and I think if you kind of go through, um, it, it's it's interesting because you're not alone in that. Um, you know, Division three player who. Um, coach some Division Three. I mean, you you see some success like that uh, throughout. But you know, can you just go back to those early days, and whether you, you as a player or you as an early coach, or those first uh, those first years, and you coached some pro hockey too um, in the AHL? Did you always have this goal of being a, a a head hockey coach at some level someday, or or what, how did, how did that develop? Yeah, I was I was. Extremely blessed. Uh, Tim Coughlin of St. Norbert College had never had an outsider coach outside. He, he had a good little program going. Um, all of his staff had already played for him. There was a year there where I'd retired from playing, and I'm like, knocked on his door, asked him if I could work hockey camp. And he would instantly called a few people. He's like, yeah, I, I actually need someone. And pretty soon that turned into running the rink and Zamboni and working for him. And then that turned into a full-time job with at St. Norbert, which I owe a ton to Cox. He, he really sprung board a lot of things in my life, USHL path. And then going back to Eau Claire, I think was, okay, I'm, I want, I'm ready to be a head coach. Was I probably in some regard, was I ready to deal with the rest of it? No, I didn't really, I wanted to be on the ice. I didn't want to deal with the rest of it. How old were you then? Oh boy. 20, Seven, nine, okay. somewhere in that range. Sure. Yeah. So um, that part, it was good. I mean, to, to do the other part of that was assistant athletic director, and you were just, it didn't feel like you were coaching hockey. You felt like you were doing everything else but the game. Um, and then to go to the American Hockey League from Division Three, which was uh, an unreal experience for me, and, and I got to work with two great guys and, and Kevin Constantine and Troy Ward and learn a lot and see a lot. And it, it's funny because even – Taking this job, some people are like, "Oh, he's he's of Kevin's tree," or if he's uh, there is no such thing. I think we all learn from each other, and, and you take what you want to take, and you learn how you how you want to apply it, type thing. So, um, but all that did was make me more hungry to go back and be head coach. That's when I went to Sioux City the first time in the USHL. Yeah. So, th- those were just those are just times. And then in Sioux City, I got fired. We got a new owner, and the new owner wanted new people and. That wasn't me. So then I went back to American Hockey League. It was kind of a, I'm like, <laughs> it wasn't about the coaching part. It, it was actually, uh, before you know it, you're hired back by Sioux City. And you're like, are you sure? And you're like, you guys were <laughs> kind of the same group that got rid of me before. And like, we're positive. And I said, okay. So it, it's been a, a wonderful journey. It's brought me in front of a lot of people. I think the the influence of, of levels, I really actually think it helps because you see what it took for a player to survive, thrive, advance. Um, you also got to see the guys that didn't, and you, you're kind of starting to pinpoint why they didn't. And, sure. Um, but you know, early I would say that I wanted to just coach in the NHL. That's all I wanted to do. And then you start to realize that NHL really stands for no home life. And then <laughs> you're you're like, okay, uh, there's a – and then college has really, really changed the the – profile of, of what it is and the amount of players advancing and, and still have an opportunity for, for professional careers. And uh, th- that's just made college hockey just such a treat to want a goal and, and want to strive to be. And, you know, you, you mentioned a, a couple of names there, but, and we, we mentioned uh, Mike Eves earlier and, and Steve Rollick, but um, it, it is always interesting when you start kind of digging into a, a coach's resume about the, the people who've had, uh, influence on their careers. And, you know, those are names uh, in, in hockey circles people know pretty well. And, and, uh, and as uh, many a coach uh, has said to me um, over the years, you know, it 
college hockey or hockey in general is a, is a pretty, um, it's, it's a pretty small circle of people and, and a lot of people know each other and a lot of paths get, um, get crossed there. But, uh, you've obviously had some, some people and, and then you mentioned obviously, uh, uh, cogs too, that, you know, just really influential coaches who probably have influenced a lot of, a lot of people. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's funny. Cause some people are like, Oh, he's a division three coach. I'm like, Oh, let me tell you, he could coach any, any team. It yeah. does. He could coach the penguins. Like, cause of the person. Um, so, so I, I just think you, you take it what you can, you blend it with what you believe in. Um, I love to read. So that that's kind of steered me in some past and some dig deep, dig times of my life. You're like, all right, what was that really real? And then you you can start to tinker around with it yourself, and pretty soon, you're like, yep, that that was real. What they're talking about. Um, <clears throat> and you mentioned the, the no home life thing. Uh, home life is is certainly important, but uh, I I know uh, you got uh, uh, your fiance and and uh, your son and your uh, fiance's uh, uh, kid, and and you all be. Uh, Everybody will be landing in Mankato at some point. Yeah, or? I mean the the, the, the kids are uh, my gal's kid. She's Ella's going off to Lincoln. She wants she's just a corn huster at, okay. at, at life. Uh, my son's away playing junior hockey. Oh, so very nice. I think he's going to keep that path about what he wants to be. And um, at no at no time will I ever coach my son. We are too good of friends. I love him <laughs> too much, and we we are, we get along way too well probably for that. Um, although the, the the dynamic has changed, he's asked me a lot more hockey questions as time has come on. Um, a mechanic could have told him way more about hockey for a while in my life, but that's okay. Um, yeah, well, you know what? In, in really blessed, I think Sadie brought a lot to my life. Um, I thought it really slowed things down. It gave me a different perspective, like. I wasn't, I bet you there was a time when you asked people that I probably worked 18 hours a day to 19 and it didn't stop until the season was over. And then sure. it was like, drop dead. And I'd come out of my coma and people were like, oh, you you do exist outside of the <laughs> rink type thing. Um, I, I just find there's a way better balance about what that is. And, and not to say that you're not working hard, not to say, but I I think it also gives you a chance to learn more, grow more, network more, just bring more people in your life. Um, what's, you know, okay. So you've been, uh, officially coach here for, uh, <laughs> um, less than 48 hours, but, um, what, what's, what are the next steps for you? What, uh, you know, what, what, what do you, what do you got going, you know, whether it's the rest of this week or the, the weeks ahead as, uh, you know, like you mentioned earlier, you know, players are, are here for a few more weeks and they'll, they'll take off for a bit and then come back. But, but for you in this whole process, what, what, you know, what, what's, What's your to-do list? Yeah, I mean, the deep dive into our own staff was, was a yep. big part. The deep dive into our own players was a big piece. Um, it, it's a lot of phone because now it's a lot of re, trying to re-recruit some guys who were, you know, I, we spoke off the air about, like, you, you commit to a school, you commit to a coach. Sometimes you're, like, really committing to a coach when you're committing to school. You're So you, you're trying to figure out that new vision, and that's, that's a process. And then, you know, we're waiting on a window here that's, not necessarily closed, but it's closing. The number of players that are getting in the portal is getting less right. and less. Um, so that's that's a different opportunity. So uh, that that's going to be one. We have our, our college coaches convention coming up. There's league meetings. Um, some of that's going to happen in a, a week from now. In the middle of it, uh, it's renting a place in Columbus. I was building a home in Columbus. I was trying to sell our home in Sioux City. <laughs> Yeah, uh, terrible in real estate. So get away from me in real estate <laughs> if you ever want to uh, buy or sell homes. Um, so I've got a couple things to knock off, and, and one of them is going to be get back to Columbus, gather my things, try to get my realtor there to sell that house with me being absent, which would be great, and then um, just really focus on this. I, there's a lot of leagues are shutting down. They're they're closing off. Their their seasons are coming to an end. Um, so you're trying to get a last glimpse, and, and as a new position, trying to get in, uh, in front of a few guys right away. Sure, and you know some of those guys who are already committed here, and then a yep. few others, and looking at the portal and and, and everything else. So it's just uh, there's a little bit of a puzzle, and, and it really is, especially when you start to talk scholarships and money and who's coming and on what and, and how much is available, and you know if if they don't come, then who's next, and if if they do come, and then can we get this guy too? Uh, there's some shuffling going on. Um, 
I would say hats off to, to Polly Kirkland. Like he's done yeah. an amazing job. One, I think keeping the guys connected, which is a big, big responsibility um, to, I, I think just holding the rope with, with other guys that are out there. And then I, I think just being ready to hit the ground. It was exciting to, to get here and, and see guys and the whites of their eyes and their excitement about, about, okay, well, let's get back to work here with a, with a new vision about what's going on. You mentioned Polly and, and, um, and the work that he did kind of hold down the fort, but, uh, um, you're going to have to build up, build a staff, and I don't know how much time that takes, but I guess the sooner you you have a staff in place, uh, some of that uh, load is going to be alleviated off your shoulders a bit, uh, or at least uh, you can have have more people uh, doing it all together. Yeah, there, there is. A, I'm a, I'm going to do it right. I don't yeah. think I'm in a huge rush right now. I think we're we're we've got a lot of players identified in, in why they would fit. Um, so I don't know if there's a lot more identification. There's probably, if there's anything, it's, I'd like to get people in place for when the guys are back around here this summer, there's kind of a slow burn of organically putting our team together without, you can't coach them in the summer. So just by having them being around and having them see coaches around, I just think that that organically kind of starts to take a, a trend for, for what you've got to get done. Sure. Well, um, Luke, congratulations again. Um, you know, you got a you got a busy schedule coming up, so I won't keep you much longer here, but uh, congratulations. Welcome to Mankato. Uh, welcome to Minnesota State. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's going to be fun to, to watch you uh, build up your, your first team. Yeah, it's exciting. And, and thank you for the, the, the people in, in the community. And uh, the welcoming was tremendous. And, and more importantly, I think uh, really exciting for where, what's to come. Well, everybody, that's Luke Strand, the new Minnesota State men's hockey coach. I'm Shane Frederick. This has been a special edition of the Maverick Hockey Live podcast presented by Duncan. We'll talk to you next time. Uh